us in the in the mood a little bit yes <laughs> i what was that that was vivaldi yeah hello if you're tuning in this is a special stream for thanksgiving for all of, for all of you out there that are enjoying your meal with your family and friends i play this music for you i hope you enjoy it and i'm going to share with you a little bit about what thanksgiving means to me and play some music for the season. So I'm right now using this app called Tom Play, which is just wonderful. I love to play it very much. Play with it. So enough of me talking. I'm going to play another song. Uh, I'm going to set that to piano. And I'm going to save that. Ooh, that's important. If you're not familiar, Tom Play is this app that has accompaniment, so humans playing the other parts, and you play along. It's wonderful. Here is something. It will get us into the mood for this upcoming month, which is known as Noel in parts of the world.
This upcoming December, we celebrate Christmas. We celebrate this wonderful time. It is called, in some cultures, the greatest story ever told. And that is the birth of Emmanuel. That is the birth of Jesus Christ. And for those of you who share the faith, God bless you. And those of you who are just watching, well, it's a pretty song and it's a song from the 12th century of France and it is Veni, Veni Emmanuel. It is very old. So 12th century, we're looking at at least 700 years, maybe 800 years around there. Sung by Gregorian monks in beautiful churches all over here in France. And so a beautiful tune, beautiful tune. Absolutely love it. Pretty stuff, pretty stuff. Um, play another one for you. I'm going to go to Keep It French, Franz Schubert. I'm going to play a little bit of, of him. Let me find his song real quick. <laughs> Here it is. This song is, I think this song was loud, so I think I have to turn it down a little bit. Let's see. That's right. I have to get the piano a little bit. <laughs> Let's continue, yeah? title of the stream is what Thanksgiving means to me and every year on this day I give special thanks to a certain group of people that mean a lot to me have touched my life in some way and so that song was for Lilian um, she left us this year and um, so I played that for you Lilian wherever you are may God rest your soul and um, so, yeah, this is what it means when you aren't in a culture like I have grown up in. When you grow up in the United States, you take an incredible amount of stuff for granted. You wake up on a Thursday, invite to friends and family's homes, and, and they all just um, shower you with food, and, and you see relatives you've never seen before, haven't seen before. And um, you share tons of food, and you, then you go to another place, have more food, and and it's well, it's, in some way, it's wonderful. Of course, it's wonderful. But when you 
get removed from that. When you remove yourself, as me, as in, and any of the any of you have lived away from your culture, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, when you have moved away from your culture, there's certain times where you feel a need to connect with it once more. Thanksgiving is a day where I feel most distant from from my uh, from my from the American culture that I grew up in. So I make the best of it and I make it with my friends and family here in France, in Europe. And I make it with you guys too. And that's, I guess, one of the reasons why I'm doing this right now is my family is more than just my friends and the people I'm related to by blood. It's the people I care for and the people I share my music with. There's a lot of you who are watching, who will watch this later and maybe watching now, who know more about me than my own mother at this moment in my life. I, if you, especially if you watch all my videos. And um, it's just one of those things where you don't, that um, people that, again, you are related to, you don't really talk to very much. And so... Yeah, I, I find out that I share so much of myself, genuinely do that too, with you guys. My music and my desires and my, my pains and, my, and uh, my discoveries. And so, yeah, it's, it's a truth. It's a truth. It's a, it's a sad truth that we all have, you know, families are complicated. And I haven't been able to share things with my own mom for years for many many years we talk on you know the occasions which as americans we do talk but i have to tell you living here in france is not it's very different family is very different from americans and i've learned to have i guess stronger family values and so but what i have what i've lost i guess from my own personal blood related family um which is very little. <laughs> I get on that side. I'm very little. I channel it into you guys. I channel it into everything I do on my channel. Everything I do for my students um, here in France and on Skype. And this particular year, I had uh, two students that on Skype that um, changed, just really changed me for the better. And I have to give a special mention, and that's why I uploaded those two videos today. <clears throat> were um, Wang Zhu and Simon. These are two of my students that are worlds apart, that are joined not only by spirit, by the Holy Spirit, both Christian, but also by cello, the spirit of cello. And uh, I have been lucky to have met both of them. Wan Zhu is, um, came to me and she lives in California and she absolutely loves playing cello. And she wrote that song that I covered on the channel today. She wrote that. She's a wonderful person, an artist that just cannot stop creating art. I linked in her video, in the video, her artwork. She does artwork. Wonderful person. And through my my interactions with her and her love, her expression for her faith, which is my faith too, I have to admit, I was more private and, and she, just, just by naturally teaching and talking about, she says, you know, I play in worship, I want to do worship music. So I thought, okay, let's, let's work on more, more sacred tunes. And I thought that'd be great. And I guess when you do something enough, it reminds you how much you love your own faith and I am a person of faith and I've been become more free of expressing it that's why I do the sacred Sundays and so I don't try to evangelize anyone but I definitely want to share with anyone who's listening the love that is this light not all these artificial lights in this room but the light that it comes from above from within us the light from within and I'm always looking for an inspiration and I found out that many of you beginners, many of you new to the instrument, will have an opportunity to play. 
and that will be in the context of your own uh, your own faiths uh, your own worship groups wherever it is in the world and it's a wonderful experience to go especially this holiday season coming up you will have the opportunity to share your music with people that need to have their hearts touched and you can do it with music and i guarantee you they will enjoy joy you and if you say hey i play cello even if you're a beginner watch out they're like oh please come play with us play with the choir i play cello i sung in the choir and i when i got good enough they made me play cello at church yes <laughs> yes they did at the time i didn't like it but now i now i do it now i do it anyway enough of me talking so that was my story of Wanju. So thank you, Wanju, for everything that you have just generally just been yourself and allowed the love and light that is inside you from the Lord shine on me. And I'm now much more comfortable with sharing my love for, for Christ. So there. And the second uh, shout out has to go to Simon. Uh, so Simon lives in England. And I, I went through a, a pretty dark patch earlier this, not just a couple of months ago, actually, uh, two months ago, it's September. And I just had a, you know, a run in with some, some, some bad elements. And in, 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 again, in a nutshell, I, I stood up for, I stood up for the, the week. I guess there was a little girl that needed to be stand up, stood up for. Anyway, I did it. I didn't need to do it, but I did stand up for um, the less fortunate. There's a church that, that's literally next door to me. It's a, and they have a little girl that's not a little slow and long story short, some teenagers on motorcycles were doing dangerous things and I, and I wanted them to stop. Tempers fled very quickly and I was getting rocks and knives and everything thrown at me, I'm not kidding, and so in the aftermath, what happened is I felt a tremendous amount of guilt for doing what I did because it is harmful when you do things like that. It is so easy to, to talk about doing the right thing, to watch movies about doing the right thing, but when you do it yourself, it's super hard because the movie just ends and you can go about your life, but my life continued. and. And I felt super, super sad, I have to admit. I was really, really sad because I just was. I knew what I did was right, but I felt sad. Um, and it was Simon. In a moment of absolute, uh, I w uh, unsolicited, and a moment of unsolicited love, he shared with me the Psalm 23. Now, I had, I had read the Psalm 23 before, and but I never had understood it. There's a book my mom used to read when I was a kid called The Living Word. And I was like, what is that, The Living Word? And I was like, oh, when you live the message that you read, that you repeat all the time, you read in the Bible and you go to church and you, and you speak with you know, people, the men of the cloth and women of faith, when you live it, it's different. Anyway, so he shared with me the psalm, and I read it, and it applied to me. It's, it, I felt truly moved by a passage that was so, that was known by everyone. I love the Psalm 23. Well, yeah. So, anyway, I digress. Um, but I was in that moment of absolute guilt that... A student of mine just felt said, hey, you know, I don't want you to think I'm overstepping my boundaries. But because um, we we with him, I never really I, he had told me he had that worship group and he had uh, played worship. But he had never like he had full on. He said, I'm not trying to evangelize you, <laughs> he said, but I need to share this with you. And he did. And um, it was the medicine that I needed. And so I give thanks to you, Simon, for reaching out to me, literally reaching out in that moment of darkness and reminding me, hey, you're not alone. What you do in life matters. So 
That's why I covered Be Still My Soul, O Finlandia, for you, Simon. And I think I want to make a tradition of this. I'm going to, I'm going to, every year, I'm going to do something special on this channel for a student or a subscriber, somebody out there that has reached through the screen and touched my heart. Because you guys definitely do that. Some of you write some great comments. Some of you have shared some amazing stories on via email. And if I, ha I, I say it with sincerity, it makes me a better student of life. <laughs> it makes me a better teacher. It makes me a better cellist. It makes me a better man. And in the case of Simon and Wanju, it's made me a better, a more proud Christian. So thank you. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> um, I keep that for the Sacred Sunday stuff. If you're not into that, it's no big deal. It's still wonderful to share this music with everyone. Which I'm going to do this, and since we're getting into the season, everyone's going to start doing, going about, shopping. Let me remind you that Black Friday is not a holiday. It is a day for corporations to sell you more crap. But one thing that is going to be on repeat in the United States, but not here in France, are, is music like this. And I miss it. And so I'm going to play it for you. Yes, I'm going to play you some Christmas music. <laughs> some holiday music. However you want to call it. Because it needs a repeat. <laughs> it needs a repeat. It needs, it needs to be looped. I need to get in contact with Tom Play to get them to loop that because that's just one verse. I can't do... I gotta keep going. Gotta keep going. Sorry. <laughs> Here's another one. Second verse.
they don't sing this stuff here in France. They don't do any of that. They don't, they don't have, there's, if you're in an English speaking country, uh, there's a ton of like, like holiday tunes that just, they don't do, they don't do here. They don't do any of that here. So it's all good. It's all good. You know, it's, um, it's all good. It's all good. I have some more in here. I'm going to play. I'm, I have the classics. Um, uh, let's see. So some of the sub, uh, what I'm using this, I'm using an app called, um, Tom play. Um, I've talked about it before and I'm about to sight read something guys. So sorry if I'm going to screw this up, this, uh, uh all but cello. So. <laughs> I, I don't know. This is a Mendelssohn heart. The Herald Angels Sing. Um, a lot of sacred tunes. A lot of sacred tunes. I'm just going to play it. This is sight reading. This is Tom play. See what happens, yeah? Two, three, four, one. <laughs> It's a little quiet. This is nice. Sometimes on tom play, you can play with a quartet, not just a piano, sometimes orchestra. This is a quartet. I think it's going to be a three. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That was um, Felix Mendelssohn, by the way. For those of you who aren't familiar, that is Felix Mendelssohn. For lots of you, you're not aware, Felix Mendelssohn was... There, so people say, oh, Mozart, Mozart, Mozart. Felix Mendelssohn was about the same age when he died. Wasn't, all, wasn't like a, a socially a little weird. People consider him weird. Mozart, I don't know. They say he had Asperger's or whatever. I don't know. But what I do know about Mendelssohn is that he had a learning curve that was non-existent. He could learn all sorts of instruments. He played many instruments and he also, um, well, at the age 14, I believe he wrote The Midsummer Night's Dream, which was at the time considered the most incredible piece of music ever written by a human being. What did Mozart write at 14? And if you compare Look at Mozart's writing at 14. Granted, of course, this is significant different in years, but Felix Mendelssohn, for me, is the true prodigy. I, people talk a lot about Mozart, but for me, for me, it's Mendelssohn. I'm a Mendelssohn sort of guy. And if you're familiar with the Fingal's Cave, oh, it's fantastic. Love it. 
Um, I have some more in here. I'm, I'm, I I downloaded a whole bunch of holiday tunes. And I'm sorry if you don't like holiday tunes. You can tune out if you want to. You can turn off the stream. But I don't live in the U.S. And um, and I, I want to be able to... Hear. Oh, we want to play some Handel? <laughs> Apparently this is Handel. And it's going to be... Okay. Here again, I'm sight reading. I'm just going to put it all but cello. What is sight reading? I'm saying these two words. Sight reading now. You as a musician will strengthen your ability to play by knowing, you know, of course, your scales and, you know, your arpeggios. But you also will do better as, um, as sight reading. It really defines you as a musician. Sight reading is right. <laughs> sight reading is this. <laughs> uh, is what I'm about to do. That means you put music in front of you. I've never played this before. See how it sounds. <clears throat> songs where everybody like everybody starts singing because it's one of those like oh let's sing joy to the world which is uh, it has i guess it was written in english because handel german composer was very popular in england um that's one of those uh, so in the catholic faith we have something called the processional and the recessional and for all those you know those easter Easter Christmas Catholics out there, I'm looking at you. You guys need to get to, you know, there's more than just what was going on for those two days. There's more than that. But for particularly for the, and, and also for the Anglicans, for a lot of you guys and Lutherans, 
but particularly uh, what I'm used to is this, this is, this is um, the recessional. That means the priest is leaving and everyone's happy, you want to go home. For those of you who go to the Midnight Mass, which is a thing in the Catholic faith, and there's a lot of faiths do this, share in the comments if you do a midnight, midnight service um, and do a vigil. Uh, but everybody just, oh, sing, let's go. <laughs> so, I used to sing, like, like, joy to the world, we, we, we can go home. Let's open our presents. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, this song, um, this is not particularly a song of the season, um, but this song I absolutely love playing absolutely love playing and is, is it going to give me no it's not it's not that i'll play it anyway it's you know see what happens <laughs> uh, it's too slow it's it's um for those of you who are uh, that's no it's jesu joy of man's desiring so i think that's all i have for the there's a way in a manger but I can't, I can't do that. You know, I try to do, Tom Play has, Tom Play has, um, anyway, they have another ta song. They, they, they have some really like hard, Silent Night's super hard on Tom Play, if you have Tom Play. And I'm going to leave after I'm done with this in the description below. Apparently they're having a sale tomorrow. Look, I don't get paid for any of this. I just like playing it. Because it connects me to music. And um, I have suggested, I've actually given uh, this as a, um, oh, oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Tannenbaum. I'll have to do that. I'll have to do Oh, Christmas tree. By the way, um, Oh, Tannenbaum, Oh, Christmas tree, uh, here in France, Oh, Oh, Beau Sapin. It is not necessarily a, a song for, uh, the season. It's not necessarily a sacred song. It is a song about a tree. Literally. It's not a sacred song. It's pretty. And I learned that from an old Korean student of mine. She says it's called, we call it the winter tree in Korea. And it's, it's nothing uh, to do with that. I really want to play Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow. But that is under authorship. And I'm not going to do that. Oh, here we go. Deck the halls with bells. Nah, no. Nah. Okay, I'll save some of that for later. Well, that is it for all my prepared music. I wanted to share with you guys. Um, one of you, by the way, so one of you commented saying, you want me to play with a little more spice, a little more high level stuff. Or whatever, if you ever see this stream, however long I've, I've talked from this point forward, I see you, I read that, and I definitely will do some of that. So when I say on this channel, you make me a better teacher and a better person yes you do you do but also you make me a better cellist and you know, keep it real we all have doubts in our head and i'm always want better 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 i always want to play better well um finally let me get any messages here i <clears throat> you sometimes we just got to get away from just trying to play good music you know playing playing good or playing bright sometimes you just have to play and in particular that happened to me this week when i was covering the song the old finlandia the be still my soul for simon i was so obsessed with playing it correct and then i realized that i i, I played for like an hour recorded kept doing it again and again and again and little bits here and there were just weren't perfect needs to be perfect and then I stopped the recording. I literally prayed a little. And I thought to myself, I'm playing this for him. And I'm going to play for him. And then I hit record and recorded it in one take. And if you could do anything this holiday season, if it's a silly song of the, song, the season, then do so. Because this season is a time of family of friends. And play your music. Play your cello for somebody else. Play for somebody else. This is 
your key to immortality right here. No amount of cream, no matter amount of dieting or surgery or money can ever get close to the fact that you play an instrument that will outlive you, that will hopefully be passed down generation to generation. I had the opportunity to teach a kid in California who played his father's cello, who had inherited that cello from his grandfather, who was dead. The son, Sam, had never met his grandfather and played the cello of his grandfather. He said to me once, this is about this very scientific kid, loves astrophysics, not religious at all. But he said to me once, I think I, sometimes I feel closer to my grandfather when I play this cello. Like his spirit is in it. If it's soul, but I don't believe in spirits or souls, but I sometimes just think differently and feel differently when I play it. It's an amazing thing. It is a gift. And hopefully one day I will be able to give this cello to my niece because she is playing. And when I pass on, I hope to give this to someone in my family. So my niece Lily plays cello, and if she'd accept it, I would gladly give it to her. Or maybe a future child of mine, if I have children. That's not in the cards right now. But um, yeah, so I titled this What Thanksgiving Means to Me. And before I get into your comments, Thanksgiving is a day of thanks, of gratitude. It's where we have to feel, have to recognize that what we do is part of something greater and everyone around us matters. And here in my home in France, I only have space for six people at my table. I cook everything. I cook the turkey. I do everything. Nobody, my wife does some, but I do everything. And... Um, you know, it's, I save it for very special six people. That's including me and my wife, so it's really just four people we invite. <laughs> and um, every year it changes, because every year there's different people that come to my dinner, and I share with them something very personal to me. Thanksgiving's very personal to me. You can say what you want about the history and things like that, but... It honestly is one of those things. And um, I'm being told to play more. <laughs> so I will play something else. <laughs> gotta, gotta watch it tells you to play more. That's what Thanksgiving means to me. Just people. So I must find something here. Um, let's pull something out of my own library here. I don't know what. I, I play stuff all the time. My wife's saying, yeah, I'll play something. So I'm, I'm going to play something. I'm going to play something. If you're watching, hi. Um, I just decided to do this literally off the, um, off the cuff. I played a little bit of this today. This one I'm going to... All right, one other person I'm thankful for. And I, I'm going to do this for you. And then I'll get to your comments if you're, if you're still around. <laughs> if I haven't bored you with all my talking. Get this guy going. Uh, this, if you're watching, you're most likely you're not. But Henner, this is for you. You know it. He knows it.
She loved that song. But Henner, by golly, you're a good friend of mine and hope one day you play that too. <laughs> there. I'll play some more music. I'm being reminded to play more music. Uh, don't get a smartwatch because it's, um, it's, um, it bothers, <laughs> it gets in here. <laughs> ah, it's, just, it's a lot to deal with, a lot to deal with, um, so. There you go. Some of you, oh my gosh. And is that, yes, that's it. So I'm going to see who's been commenting, who's not. So again, last bit, sorry for talking so much. I know it's cello channel. <laughs> I'll play more if you want me to. I'm going to set this aside for a moment. So thank you. For tuning in, everyone. If you are here, happy Thanksgiving. Comment time, fun stuff. I've got to look at the, the thing over here. <sighs> oh, there you are, Simon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've talked about this, but I'm telling you, never, this is your bow. <laughs> you won't break the tip. I've broken the tip four times already. Always put your bow in a safe place. If you're looking for a holiday gift for yourself, a Christmas gift, this right here, get them on Amazon, wherever you want, but this Super important. Super important. Ah, anyway. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in. I'm just gonna go from the, from... <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, Simon. Happy Thanksgiving. Hello, Karen. Simple living with Karen. Um, happy Thanksgiving to you. More than words. It's a song for my childhood. I always love comforting. And I can play it on the guitar. The my guitar over there. Um, I, I usually don't have it in here. 
<laughs> this is totally. I'll play. I'll do this is like. That's all I got for you. <laughs> I like that song too. I like that song too. Would it be good on the cello? That song? I don't know. I do stuff like that. You come ahead, play this. Though. I'll try it. <laughs> um, the marionettes. Thank you, uh, Karen. Blessing to you too. Isn't Joy to the World great? <laughs> um, Braden wants to know, why did I move to France? Because I wanted to have a, a master's degree. And I always grew up in a family of two. I'm going to do this. You could, you could see that the whole time? I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know that was you could see that or maybe I pulled it up. I moved to France because it was an opportunity that came to my way. I was living in California. Housing prices was not within the books and I just wanted a master's degree and learn a different language. And the lady I was dating at the time, which is in the house house that I live in that I married to, uh, she said, hey, would you consider France? And I'm here. I didn't know any French before I came here. Maintenant, j'ai parlé un peu, un petit peu français. Uh, je déteste ma voix en français. <laughs> you will one day, Book Dragon, be able to play. Uh, you will be able to do that. <laughs> and I see you, Wanju. Thank you again. It's been a blessing teaching you. It's been a blessing... Um, working with you and let me say your song is gorgeous I loved playing it so Wanju's in here if you see her she's a I can't <laughs> I can't say your name Julia Julia Plas Joy Plas music I just say joy, joy place music. It's terrible, but that's her. She's a great lady, and she's you know she's a torrent of music. That's great. It's fantastic. Happy birthday! Yeah, I will look for those of you out there. I made a video about me turning forty. Um, I turn forty one month from now. Okay, one month. Just one month. That's what's happening. Uh, I will be turning forty. Not now, so give me one more month of being in my 30s. Okay? Just one more month. Uh, just one more month, all right? Will Carson? Michaels? And by the way, for any of you out there who want to know, and if you're having a birthday in the near future, why don't you have somebody this is an easy song that you can learn by ear. So Carson, if you're still watching, this is for you. Happy birthday. For anyone else. <laughs> Also, you, Header. I know you don't watch my streams, but my friend Henner is a hacker, 
a genius of a guy when it comes to creating things out of electronic parts. He's a great guy. Always busy, though. Rommel, I see you. Thank you for tuning in. Happy Thanksgiving. It's been a pleasure teaching you, too. Um, my students really touch my heart a lot, and yeah, I teach because of you guys. I teach because of you guys. So thanks. And, um, so anyway. I'll play something else if you want something. Premiere, thanks. <laughs> Hello. Bonsoir. Magali. So, ma soeur Magali habite ici en France, ici, en Toulouse, avec moi. Uh, on rire, on rire toujours. And uh, c'est une, c'est une, c'est une bénédiction pour moi. C'est une, c'est une personne spéciale pour moi, Magali Dobert. So, merci pour tout, Magali. Et Nico. Merci pour le apéro, pour le André. <laughs> Pour le plan, le désert est digestif. He knows what I'm talking about. Um, yes. Um, I guess I'm, I'm asking to play... Uh, yeah! Hello, Cora Lee. Yes, I'm doing it late so I can have uh, the world connecting. Cora Lee. Cora Lee Nathan. Um, student in Australia. Sorry to say your second name, but Coralie is a great gal. Um, creative too. A lot of you out there that are getting to cello are super creative. And um, I'm being asked to play more cello music, so. <laughs> I'm gonna play this one. You know it, all of you. Sing along if you know the words. If you don't know the words, look it up online. <laughs> Let me find it. going to do more of these <laughs> I was I was asked to play that see I'm getting um, requests to, to do things on my watch some of you are getting directly to me through uh, uh, <laughs> uh, another uh, beautiful love love these things love the holiday season oh Christmassy I don't care what you think about the season jeezy crazy it's great I got I got I got a bunch um, here's a tune.
put the amen in there. Some of these songs come with that, by the way. Some of these songs come with that. By the way, now I'm going to get some, I get some deep cello music. Um, let me find it. This is all oh, the Vals de Fleurs. Uh, uh, see if I can play this. Pardon me if I can't play this. Um, it's been a while. Okay. I'm sorry if I messed this up. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> Gotta get that. <laughs> um, there is the cas la casse noisette. Le casse noisette. La casse noisette. Tchaikovsky. And this is our moment. <laughs> <laughs> Round two. Oh, the Vals de Fleurs. So it's been a while since I played that one. Um, that's one of the moments, and then there's the pas de deux. Um, and maybe I won't kill you guys with this because. All right. There's two moments in the Casamazette, and um, right. Um, maybe I. I don't know. If somebody says I play the pas de deux, I'll play the pas de deux. If you don't know what that is, then I'm not gonna play it because I haven't played it in years. But I'll play it if you ask me to. I'll, I'll literally embarrass myself. All right. Hello, used to shoot film. Yes, I can play some Haydn C cello concerto. Um, Thrasher mods for the win. I'll play a little bit of that. <laughs> something for you thrasher mods since you uh oh richard see a bright above hoffman hoffman so i'm going to uh, introduce you guys to a guy named hoffman all right i absolutely love this guy um when i was a teenager which presumably some of you are that age um where is he where is he where is he I'm looking for my composers. If you wanted to play classical German, then you had a really a choice of Haydn, Haydn C, Haydn D. Um, 
there wasn't really much. And then, I'm not kidding, somebody came along in the 1990s. Some, some rich person died here in Europe. This is a true story. And they had discovered amongst their belongings a bunch of, 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 um, of music. I'm going to play, I'm going to play the, this. I'm going to play the second movement just to get the, the, the little, uh, our, our appetite. Anyway, somebody discovered the music of this guy. His name is Leopold Hoffman. And the, it is a credible opportunity because, uh, so the music was discovered in the 1990s. The music was written in the 1700s early classical, pro, pro, quite possibly prior to this. Okay? Prior to that, Leopold Hoffman was Mozart's boss. Okay? Let me give you some context, okay? And before I play the famous tune, uh, I, guess, I guess I'll play, I'll play the first one, right? Leopold wrote this! And I absolutely love it. If your if you're love is still for you, Thrasher. For you, Thrasher. <laughs> Thrasher mods, you want to f f surprise some people? Play this. Like this. <laughs> 
I love it. <laughs> I love Leopold Hoffman is fun. It's so much fun. So much fun. And then he he wrote this. So second movement. The short too, by the way. There's so um, a little more backstory about this. I'll just play it and then I'll talk about it later. Second movement. That was a little bit of the first. Sorry, haven't practiced it forever. But it's in there, right? Second movement. <laughs> Instead of all the Haydn, which is great, by the way. Ah, Leopold Hoffman was known for a flute, writing flute stuff, right? Anyway, so this guy dies in Europe, uh, big castle, as people have castles here, <laughs> legit, there are castles everywhere. And they discover in a chest, in a trunk, um, they discover uh, the these concertos, these cello concertos, six 
classical cello concertos in the late 90s. They were first published in 98 or 2000. They were first recorded in 2003. To give you an example of this, this is this music. There's only two recordings or three recordings. There's not many recordings of this out there. You have to actually buy it. It's it's not under authorship, but there's only one company in the world that prints this. You can't find this. This is not like Haydn. No, this is. I, I purchased this. So there are six cello concertos. Two are incomplete because they literally disintegrated in the hands of the researchers that found it. But there's four of them. There's C, there's G, and there's some others. Um, and they're fantastic. They're beautiful. They're... Got, they got moments in it that's just, um, they, they have moments that are just beautiful in them and they like pull on your heartstring. Anyway, so that's Leopold Hoffman for those of you who know. The wonderful Haydn, get to know Hoffman. He wrote in D, he wrote in C. You can buy it. I believe the publisher is a Badley, B-A-D-L-E-Y. I will... And Julian, I'm calling out to you. There's, a, there's my ginger in Oregon. You don't ever watch my channel, but we worked on this a lot and we never got the chance to record it together. It's, and they're short. By the way, they're not super long. They're really short and fun to play. They're great. The whole entire concerto, all three movements, takes a maximum of 13 to 15 minutes for the whole thing. You're not up there like going off. <laughs> you're just like played, you're done. It's fantastic. It is fantastic stuff. So there you go. Adios Nonino from Astor Piazzolla. Well, Maduro, I have to, uh, I have to try, right? So I have been requested to play a song and I'm going to see if I can find, no, I don't have the music, but since it's a super chat, I should try, right? Adios, uh, Nonino, Nonin, I, I don't know, and, um, Piazzolla. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a, just an image search and I'm literally going to play what I see if there's an image out there. <sighs> Scribd. Let's see what they got. What does Scribd have? I don't know how this goes. But since you asked, huh? Right? sharp <laughs> uh, let me try it one more time with the f sharp right there sorry again i'll go for the metal mosso maduro thank you for the super chat uh here
So I am sorry if I butchered that. I did my best. Um, that's, I was sight reading that, by the way. I've never played it before. I've never heard it before. I'm terrible. I, I think I recognize it. Um, so thank you for the super chat. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah. Anyway. <sighs> yeah, I know. Isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, I have to put in my string back. You're welcome. I used to play the Thanksgiving with my family overseas now and far away from guitar and violoncello. Well, Russell, see, that's what we do. We uh, cello just connects us. Cello just connects us. See, I see you, Kevin. I've never played the Tarantella by Popper. Never. So, um, <laughs> I've never learned. I'm not even going to try to play it right now. I don't. Do I even have it? Um, as uh, we all do, where is it? Popper. I don't have it. I have. No, I don't have it. I have a gabot. I have the gabot. Uh, but I don't have that. And so Popper, David Popper, for those of you who want to dream big, David Popper is something we all play as cellists because it's just something we do. And he wrote the high school of cello playing and 40 etudes and learn all 40, you should master the instrument. So, you know what? You keep asking and I have to do, I have to look at it. Yes, yes. See, now I have, now I just gave my word. Okay, Kevin. Uh, that'll be a 2020 sort of thing. I'll look at it. All right. I, I will definitely look at it. Yes. All right. There. <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely do that. I always do the swan, Joshua. I always do the swan. <laughs> I always do the swan. It's... There are certain uh, things you do uh, as, as a cello player. The swan is one of them. If somebody else says this one, then yeah, I'll do it. I always, always play that thing. But since it's Thanksgiving, all right. Do I have it by memory? I'm waiting for someone else to be like, yes, yes, play this one. And, and, and there it is. Um, you know what I have? I have something else that you guys, uh, that you guys don't know. I have something else. Something beautiful. Something, you have to really know opera to know the one I'm going to do. So if somebody seconds this one, I'll do it. If it, is, if it needs to be second. It needs to be like, yes, like a, an X2 or something. Where is it? Um, a while ago, I got this. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. For those of you, okay, I, so Kevin, I can't, you know, I've, I've denied you that. I'll play something interesting. Okay, <laughs> a second. Okay. <laughs> turns my pages on my iPad. Cello players out there, get modern, get an iPad, get a tablet, and get one of these things. I had a cool, I had a flow going. Ugh. Stupid. 
<laughs> I can't believe that happened. They're smashing away. See? Not edited, right? <laughs>
that was just totally random. I saw that, like, I always want to play that. So, if you don't know what that was, that was one of the... I gotta count them. The 11 Capricios from Joseph de Maria del Abaco. Long, very long name. But yeah, that's one of his Capricios. That's the primo. That's the first one. And it's written for unaccompanied cello. That's correct for all, the, all of you out there who want to play unaccompanied cello music. There isn't just Bach. There's Dalla Bacco. Eleven Capricios. <clears throat> of course. Yes, the Sleeping Beauty. Very nice. Okay. Got two requests. So anyway, uh, do this one. Of course, why not? Where is it? Um, my, it's somewhere. Here it is. Okay. I'm actually pulling the music up for this. There are certain songs we play as cello players. This is one of them. This is one of your stairway songs. And I will leave you with this. Thank you for all of you who have tuned in. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. God bless you all.